This colony exists on Mars, populated by specially select people from different cultures and occupations taken from all over the Earth. A public charade of antagonism between the Soviet Union and the United States has been maintained over all these years in order to fund projects in the name of national defense when in fact we are the closest allies. At some point, President Kennedy discovered portions of the truth concerning the drugs and the aliens. He issued an ultimatum in 1963 to MJ-12. President Kennedy assured them that if they did not clean up the drug problem, he would. He informed MJ-12 that he intended to reveal the presence of aliens to the American people within the following year and ordered a plan developed to implement his decision. President Kennedy was not a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and knew nothing of Alternative 2 or Alternative 3 that I can find out. Internationally, the operations were supervised by an executive committee known as the Policy Committee. In the United States, they were supervised by MJ-12 and in the Soviet Union by a sister organization. President Kennedy's decision, of course, struck fear into these people. His assassination was ordered by the Policy Committee, and the order was carried out by agents of MJ-12 in Dallas. President John F. Kennedy was murdered by the Secret Service agent who drove his car in the motorcade, and the act is plainly visible in the film. It was stated in the documents that I saw. The assassin's name is William Greer. Watch the driver and not Kennedy when you view the film, when you can find a film that even shows it. All of the witnesses who were close enough to the car to see William Greer shoot Kennedy were themselves all murdered within two years of the event. That's fact. The Warren Commission was a farce and Council on Foreign Relations members made up the majority of its panel. They succeeded in snowing the American people and they hid the truth. And many other patriots who have attempted to reveal the alien secret have also been murdered throughout the intervening years. And that is why I've been so careful about the information that I released, because it was so important that I get here today to be able to tell you the truth, and what happens after me, after today, is of no consequence whatsoever. But what you do is. During the era of the United States' initial space exploration and the moon landings, every launch was accompanied by alien craft. A moon base dubbed Luna was sighted and filmed by the Apollo astronauts. Domes, spires, tall round structures which look like silos, huge T-shaped mining vehicles which left stitch-like tracks in the lunar surface, and extremely large as well as small alien craft appear in the photographs. It is, in fact, a joint United States, Russian, and alien base. The space program is a farce and an unbelievable waste of money. Alternative 3 is a reality, and it is not at all science fiction. Most of the Apollo astronauts were severely shaken by this experience and their lives and subsequent statements reflect the depths of the revelation and the effect of the muzzle order which followed. They were ordered to remain silent or suffer the extreme penalty, death, which was termed an expediency. One astronaut actually did talk to the British producers of the TV expose Alternative 3 confirming many of the allegations, however I do not know who it was. In the book, Alternative 3, the pseudonym Bob Groden was used in place of the astronaut's identity. It was also stated that he committed suicide in 1978. This cannot be validated by any source, and I believe that several so-called facts in the book are really disinformation. However, I can assure you that Alternative 3 is real. I firmly believe that this disinformation is a result of pressure put upon the authors and is meant to nullify the effect upon the populace of the British TV expose entitled Alternative 3. The headquarters of the international conspiracy is in Geneva, Switzerland. The ruling body is made up of representatives of the governments involved as well as the executive members of the group known as the Bilderbergers. Meetings are held by the policy committee when necessary on a nuclear submarine beneath the polar ice cap. The secrecy is such that this was the only method which could ensure that the meetings could not be bugged and is the only place where they discuss their most secret matters. I can say that the book is at least 70% true from my own knowledge and the knowledge of my sources. I believe that the disinformation was an attempt to compromise the British TV expose with information which could be proven false 
just as the Eisenhower briefing document was released here in the United States under the contingency plan Majestic 12 and which can also be proven false. Since our interaction with the aliens began, we have come into possession of technology beyond our wildest dreams. A craft named Aurora exists at Area 51 which makes regular trips into space. It is a one-stage ship called a TAV or trans-atmospheric vehicle. And it can take off from the ground using a seven-mile runway, go into high orbit, return on its own power and land on the same runway. We currently have and fly atomic-powered alien craft at Area S4 in Nevada. Our pilots have made interplanetary voyages in these craft and have been to the moon, Mars, and other planets aboard these craft. There is a group of pilots at the base who wear a patch, which has a little alien peeking over the bottom. It has, I think, three or four letters at the top. I forget what they are, but John Lear knows what they are. There is a picture of Saturn and a picture of Mars in the photograph. And in the background, there are seven stars, which are strangely shaped just like the stars in the Pleiades group. What that means, I don't know. We have been lied to about the true nature of the moon, the planets Mars and Venus, and the real state of technology that we possess today at this very moment. There are areas in the moon where plant life grows and even changes color with the seasons. And this seasonal effect is because the moon does not, as claimed, always present the exact same side to the earth or the sun. There is an area that wobbles in and out of darkness on a seasonal basis and it is near this area that the plant life grows. The moon does have a few man-made lakes and ponds upon its surface and clouds have been observed and filmed in its atmosphere. How many of you remember the period of time, several years, when almost every reported alien craft that was reported landed was on or near water and appeared to be pumping water into the craft? How many of you remember that? Quite a few. The water went to the moon, ladies and gentlemen, to change the moon and it is working. It possesses a gravitational field and man can walk upon its surface without a spacesuit breathing from an oxygen bottle after undergoing decompression the same as any deep sea diver. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can come from 1,200 feet underwater to the surface through decompression, you can go from the surface to one atmosphere of vacuum. See, vacuum does not cause a problem for the human body. It's the inert gas that's dissolved in your tissues and in your bones and in the fluids in your body that causes you the problem. If this is decompressed properly, you will have no problem. All you need is a very small amount of oxygen very small pressure to breathe. You will suffer no harm except for one thing, that oxygen becomes toxic after breathing it over a long period of time. Therefore, excursions would have to be of a minimal time length. Other than that, there is no reason why you or anyone else cannot walk on the surface of the moon or in space in a vacuum without a spacesuit. How do I know? I used to be one of the world's experts on deep sea mixed gas breathing mixtures for divers and on deep saturation diving. When I was the head of the department of the mixed gas deep saturation diving division of the College of Oceaneering. And I can tell you now it's much easier to decompress to a vacuum and walk on the surface of the moon than it is to bring a man up from 600 feet. <laughs> 